I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Tuesday, January the 30th, brought to you in part by Fairpiece. We talk about Fairpiece on the feeder flash all the time. It's that revolutionary product that's scientifically proven. Uh, you don't have to poke another hole at them. You just uh, squirt that uh, substance over their pole and over their muzzle. Uh, it tends to calm the cattle down, takes their anxiety away. Uh, they, they'll get up and eat and they'll drink, uh, get along with other cattle if you're mixing cattle together. Uh, people are using it for a variety of reasons uh, whenever they want to take the stress away from their cattle. And I'm sure you could find a good reason for it too. It's only about three bucks a dose, guys. Uh, it's worth the money here if it works at all. And it does work. It's proven. There's uh, been a lot of... Uh, videos and you've seen them here on National Beef Wire about how good it works and how much success the folks are having with Fairpiece. Try some of it. For more information go to fairpiece.com. Also Beaver County Stockyards uh, another big sale for them about 5,000 head here on Tuesday for the regular cattle auction and excuse me gonna be heavier on the yearlings which is a kind of a surprise there about 1,500 calves mostly four to six weight calves and lion's share of them be long time weaned. Some calves good enough to turn right out without any uh, worry right there. are going to be about 2,500 yearlings. Quality will be outstanding. Uh, they're looking at 22 straight loads of seven to nine weight yearling steers and about 12 straight loads of six to eight weight yearling heifers. Uh, there'll be a lot of mixed uh, deals of heifers off of that, some more than a load, some less, but you can put together a lot of yearling cattle there at Beaver County Stockyards here on Tuesday. Also about 800 cows, and including in there is 160 cows off one deal, three to five years old and heavy bred. If you guys want to get in there and buy some of those bred cows, uh, be sure to make it to Beaver County Stockyards in Beaver, Oklahoma or get on to dvauction.com, call them ahead, get approved to bid. You can view and bid that sale right there. Excellent weather and market. Uh, the weather, everybody I talked to on Monday uh, just complimented on how great the weather was. Unseasonably warm and pleasant uh, up in the Midwest, even up into the Northern Plains. Uh, I was driving from uh, South Texas up here to the Texas Panhandle. Beautiful weather there. Beautiful weather in Oklahoma. Beautiful in Missouri. It was just beautiful. The whole uh, middle third of the United States was beautiful. Not sure about on the on the coast, but uh, uh, I tell you where, where the cattle were being marketed. They love the weather. They love the sunshine on the backs of those cattle. Uh, it's muddy around up in the, in the Midwest. It's muddy. Of course, they had quite a bit of snow and then they've had some rain and now the warm weather is, is making that uh, ground really soft. But uh, I tell you what, when you get sunshine uh, this time of the year, you just love it. And then the market was outstanding. Everybody I talked to on Monday uh, couldn't, couldn't quit going on about how great the market was. People sending me quotes, uh, higher quotes than I'd seen uh, really ever. Uh, Kevin Larson out there in Aberdeen, South Dakota said it might have been as aggressive of a sale on, on feeder cattle as he'd seen uh, at Joplin Regional Stockyards. They underestimated their offering by 3,500 head. Uh, I, you know, they thought, well, it's going to be muddy. People won't be wanting to get around. No, they were getting them out of there. Uh, and that 7,500 head run uh, turned into over 11,000. Just a very impressive uh, uh, day to sell cattle and the market was good. Uh, the bo board turned south there towards the end of the, uh, the session there, but it's not going to uh, ruin the, the bullishness that we feel fundamentally in the markets and, and especially with our inventory. Uh, that inventory report's coming up here tomorrow on Wednesday and uh, they've got the, the estimates out, cattle and calves, total inventory, uh, the, the range of guesses ranges from down 1.3% to down 2.1% compared to a year ago, with that average being around 1.8% uh, lower than a year ago. Uh, if that uh, it comes true, that will be the lowest total inventory since 1951 
just 87.7 million head of cattle. Uh, the calf crop uh, for last year is expected to be even smaller, ranging from down 1.9% to down 3.3%, with that average being down 2.4%. That would be the lowest calf crop or the tiniest calf crop since 1941, people. Wow. I mean, and that is bullishness. You, you, I mean, supply and demand, you can't uh, outrun bullishness like that. And hopefully it comes right in there uh, on Wednesday when we get that uh, report coming out. I wouldn't say the hinge, uh, it hinges as much on the guesses as, say, the cattle on feed report, but it's still there. And I think if it is somewhere within the range, we'll continue to see things uh, kind of bullish here uh, fundamentally. But uh, uh, tell you what, we're getting ready to go to uh, uh, your cattle con, uh, National Corporate Beef Association's big conference there. It's going to be in Orlando, Florida. Uh, they do have a huge trade show there where a lot of business is done. Uh, not a lot of producers there, but just uh, different people that are that are uh, there uh, exhibiting, talking to other exhibitors. But that's kind of the way that goes. It's been that way for a long time. They make it so expensive uh, that a typical producer can't go. Uh, it's pretty damn expensive for uh, those of us that are there for uh, advertising businesses uh, or reasons to go. But uh, tell you what, on this uh, uh, EID issue that's coming up here, uh, the policy that they're going to vote on, uh, that they're kind of hiding uh, behind disease traceability, uh, I tell you what, continue to do this. And I, and I know I asked you to do this, and I, I hate to ask you to do this, but call your NCBA affiliate, your state cattlemen's organization, if you're a member of that, if you're a member of a local organization, get a hold of them, get together, and continue to push on this. Uh, we're starting to turn the tide a little bit. Now, three or four days ago, I wouldn't have thought uh, that there was a chance that we could stop this, uh, everybody having to put an e uh, EID tag in, uh, for traceability but now that we're pulling the covers back and everybody's seeing what it's going to do and we're seeing how many small producers it's going to push uh, completely out of the business uh, I was talking to another uh, sale barn owner friend of mine in North Texas on Monday he said he talked to a 75 year old uh, cow calf man he has about 800 cows he has no help uh, he's got a 12-year-old grandson that he picks up and rides with him to open the gates and stuff like that. He will uh, hire day workers and he'll get his cattle processed, but he, he told uh, my friend there, he says, if they cram this down my throat, he said, I'm, I'm just giving up. I'm quitting. And that's what everybody is telling me, especially across the southeast. If they push this on them, they're quitting. And we need all these uh, members of our industry. We need all these cow-calf producers. If we don't, we don't want our industry to be smaller. We want it to be bigger. All of these producers have the right to have cattle. And we shouldn't be forcing them out here uh, saying that every one of them's got to uh, get those cattle, wrangle them down or get them in a chute or something and have an EID tag in there. Or whenever they get ready to market them, uh, the sale barn's going to have to get all those cattle together and then shrink them and ram and jam them through the chute to get that put in uh, at the producer's expense with all the shrink and everything. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense. And it's not doable. It's not feasible. It can't happen. Uh, and we're starting to get some of these affiliates to understand that. Uh, I heard on, on Monday that Oklahoma Cattlemen's Association has changed their minds. I give them a hard time all the time because they've got way more cow-calf producers and backgrounders than they have feedlots. They should be supporting the cow-calf producers, not the feedlots. I, I can understand why Kansas Livestock Association and Texas Cattle Feeders uh, are only thinking about the feedlots and their corporate partners and the packers. But Oklahoma, not so much. It's all cow-calf people and backgrounders for the most part. And, uh, and they're starting to see the light. They understand. You, you just can't feasibly put that many cattle through the chute whenever they come in. You got these big runs. They have 10,000 in Oklahoma City uh, on Monday. You know, likely 
two to four thousand of them would have to have a tag at some point. You can't do it. It's not possible. Uh, I was talking to Jackie Moore there over the weekend. He said, he said, we can't do it. We don't have the help. We don't have the room. He said, you know, we're, we're running 20,000 cattle through this operation a week at sometimes. We just physically cannot do it. It's not feasible. It can't happen. So why push through some? Why help, legend? Why help some kind of a rule or a bill that's being pushed through? And that's what this NCBA directive would do. It's asking NCBA to make rules uh, that are going to affect everybody that owns a cow. And, and it just physically cannot happen. It, it's like, uh, you know, saying that we all have to have an electric car, you know, in, in, in 10 years or something. Uh, you know, we don't have uh, the ability to do that yet. And if, if it's not feasible, why make the rules if you know that we can't follow them? And then they're, and then they're wanting to put the, the weight on the cell barn shoulders, making them be the ones to have to do it all. When they don't want to do it, they don't have the help to do it. And they just physically cannot do it. I mean, I think all of us uh, uh, that's worked cattle has had a big bunch of cattle run over the top of us or, or past us as we're trying to jump on the fence or something, and then somebody hollering in the back, get a count on them. Well, we can't. Well, you can't do this either. And if you can't tag every, every one that exists, every one that breathes air, there's no use making the rule. Because uh, that's the only way uh, that traceability stuff works is, is if everybody does it. And everybody can't do it. And it's not going to happen. So we, we're starting to see that turn a little bit. Also heard on Monday afternoon, uh, we're starting to get through uh, to Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association. Uh, I can't believe that we have to get uh, influential people to get a hold of them to do it. They should understand how this works. They're the ones in Texas that are supposed to be, uh, you know, speaking for uh, your, your producers, cow-calf people, your backgrounders, it's cattle raisers. Uh, they, they were mostly put in uh, existence because of theft of cattle. But uh, you, you've got to speak for those uh, producers. And I, I think we're going to get this deal done. We need to get some pressure on Nebraska Cattlemen's Association and make sure that Iowa Cattlemen's Association is with us. Uh, because I think we can do that. We pretty much got all the southeast except for Florida and I told an Alabama friend of mine on Monday I can see why you all don't really claim Florida. For some reason Florida has decided that this is a good deal. When I, I would assume uh, in, in Florida's case probably over half the cattle that would show up at an auction market would need a, would need a tag. And, and they can't do it. They just physically cannot do it. So uh, we've we got pretty much everybody else. Kentucky has changed their mind and signed on. And, and there's, there's no, uh, no shame in that. If you signed on to the bill, they changed the language in the bill. They come out, it was just supposed to be for brood cows uh, and bulls uh, trying to work that in down the line. And then they changed all the, all the language in there. Uh, and then all of a sudden, it's, it's every hoof that walks by 2026. Can't happen. We can't let this go through. And I, do, I, I, I can smell blood in the water. I don't think it's going to be able to happen. You guys, call your affiliate. Get a hold of people. Talk to them. Tell them we can't get this deal done. It's going to be a complete train wreck. Uh, and we'll get it stopped. Let's talk about your board on Monday. February live cattle futures ended up down 107 at 177.37. April down 45 cents at 181.22. Your back months were down 37 cents to down 62 cents. Feeder cattle for March now. Uh, January went off. March down 107 to 38.62. April down a buck. At 244.60, uh, your back months down 55 to down 132. Not sure why your board was down because everybody would have assumed it was going to be up, and I guess that's why. But uh, it, it, it's not down nearly as much as it's been up here for the last couple of weeks. March corn uh, down six cents a bushel at 440 and a quarter. March beans down 15. All your commodities were down at 1194 and a quarter. And March Kansas City wheat down six and a half cents a bushel at six eighteen and a quarter. Your weighted average for last week's negotiated fed cattle trade 
out of your five area feeding region totaled up to be 69,700 head, which was a lot more uh, than the blizzard week of 29,500 and more than the same week a year ago, which was 57,200. But don't be thinking that less than 70,000 is really good trade. Uh, in, in my point of view, it needs to be over 100,000 in your five area, uh, but we rarely see that anymore. Live sales of fat steers and heifers last week ranged from 173 to 178. That was two to two and a half bucks higher. Your weighted average of 175.44 was up 168. Uh, your your dressed market uh, in your five area ranged from 274 to 278, one to two dollars higher. Uh, your weighted average on dressed steers 276.87, up almost three dollars, up 298 guys. Uh, but as a whole, your Southern Plains was two bucks higher at 175. Northern Plains steady to four higher from 174 to 177 and dress prices in the Northern Plains three to four higher at 277. Nationwide, we sold 83,400 uh, compared to 37,300 the previous week and 71,200 the same week a year ago. Of that uh, 83,400, about 11% worth for the 15 to 30 day delivery. Uh, they're not gonna get a, a really good foothold like that. Uh, negotiated grid, which they're doing more of, but there's no negotiation in it. It's just grid at 53,400 last week. Forward contracting total 38,300 head and formula sales last week were 284,500. Uh, but uh, of your negotiated sales, which is the only way we can get any kind of price discovery or transparency there, Iowa uh, sold 28,800 last week. That's more than twice the previous week. Nebraska, 19,800, nearly three times as many as the previous week. Kansas sold 14,100, over twice as many. And Texas, 6,900, which is not a lot, but still more than twice as many as the previous week. Box beef cutout values. Uh, your choice cannot hold the $3 uh, line there. It was over $3 uh, at the end of the week. And then on Monday's close, 299.42 down 111. Selects down 31 cents at 288.82. Slaughter, 125,000. That's the biggest Monday we've had for quite a while. That's where we should start out every week is 125,000 harvest. We did here on uh, this Monday have it for a while. That's 10,000 more than last Monday uh, and 5,000 more than the same Monday uh, a year ago. Talk about what else is going on. Night Latch Group in Western Oklahoma, that's Andy Cunningham. Now he can sell you, uh, you know, all the kind of risk management you want. He's got crop insurance, uh, he does the LRPs, lack of rainfall insurance. But call and ask him to explain uh, to you about your livestock gross margin policies, uh, which he's, he's kind of found a niche in, and it's a good way. Uh, to hedge the risk on your cattle and your corn at the same time. For more information, go to nightlatch.net. Talk about your feeder cattle market, and boy, was it smoky, guys. Your real-time index on DV auction based on an 800-pound cash auction steer up through your middle 12 states, 237.17, up $1.47 compared to the end of last week. Uh, and making up and, and uh, leaving the CME cash feeder cattle index behind, which it's always behind, but 234.15 was the most recent CME cash feeder cattle index. Of course, that's what settles your LRPs, guys. But man, sharply, sharply higher everywhere you looked, including your big markets. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma National Stockyards had 10,000 head. Feeders were five to 10 bucks higher. Calves were 10 to $20 higher. Uh, you just don't see that very often. Uh, a big stick out sale in Oklahoma City uh, was National Livestock Commission firm. Sold 53 steers, weighed 643 at 276. You've kind of seen that over in the Sand Hills of Nebraska and places like that, but not in Oklahoma City. But saw a lot of impressive quotes out of Oklahoma City on Monday. Joplin Regional Stockyards. I told her that I told you they underestimated big time. 
7,500 head is what they estimated, ended up with 11,300. Wow, they underestimated most more than most places get. But uh, they called the market, which it was wild. I, I don't blame the market reporter, but the uh, Missouri Department of Ag market reporter called the market seven to twenty-two dollars higher, with spots as much as twenty-seven dollars higher than last week, and they had a pretty good run last week. Uh, it, Joplin was your national beef fire stick out sale of the day. Look at the trends or the changes over on the right hand side of the screen as I go down through these best tested weights. Uh, 1,103 head of five weight steer calves in Carthage, Missouri at Joplin Regional Stockyards. Average 553 at 293.80. 1,543 head of six weight steers. Average 644 at 261.50. 1,902 head of seven weight steers. Average 746 with a weighted average price of 24066 and 874 head of eight weight steers Joplin Regional Stockyards average 848 with a weighted average price of 23229 wow that would have been a stick out deal a week ago uh, your heifers 1166 head of five weight heifers average 556 at 24658 1282 head of six weight heifers Average 651 at 23071 and 1021 head of seven weight heifers at Joplin Regional Stockyards. Average 744 pounds with a weighted average price of 217.40. Uh, the market was fully nine to ten dollars higher on your weighted averages there, so it was easy as easily as much higher as, as what the market reporter called it there. But just a really wild sell there at Joplin and that is your market there in the lower Midwest. Uh, had a, a heck of a sale at Russell Livestock Market in Russell, Iowa. They sell 5,000 up there. Uh, the Iowa market reporter called their steers 9 to 20 bucks higher and the heifers 7 to 25 dollars higher. 60 head of steers weighed 665 and bring 279 and a quarter. Uh, how about West Point uh, livestock auction in West Point, Nebraska. John Shaven gave me the heads up on a string of heifers that he sold there. Black nose Charlet heifers. Uh, they are for feeding. They've already been uh, implanted, but they were fancy feeding heifers. A big string of them. 258 head and one whack weighed 787 and bring 237.50. Black nose Charlet heifers, guys. But the most impressive quote that I saw anywhere on Monday in your Macrosin, no BS, top quote for the day, come out of Aberdeen Livestock Sales in Aberdeen, South Dakota. It was 63 steers, weighed 817, and bring 256 and a quarter. And that's your feeder flash for Tuesday.